was a major reason for success <coughs> at the beginning is to have an ID. The most important word uh, in our business is desire. I am very competitive, so it's like in tennis. I always want to win. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Top 10, top I got a top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. All my life, like now. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more, and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, Bernard Arnault, and my take on his top 10 rules for success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Have an idea. And our culture is based mainly on creativity, and in a startup, it's a major reason for success <clears throat> at the beginning is to have an ID, a, a creative ID, an innovative ID that is <clears throat> really putting the, the company uh, with an advance to everybody else. It should be, to be successful, a game changer. Rule number two, create an impeccable brand. When I was managing the family business, which was in a different sector, I happened to uh, enter in contact with a group in France that was uh, having problems, uh, business problems. And in this group, there was Christian Dior. And I was interested by business, and I wanted to turn around this group and build on, which I think was at the time, the best asset, and the best asset was Christian Dior. And, and I was interested in Christian Dior <clears throat> for a long time. Because the, the, the first time, you know, you are very young, but the first time I was in New York, it's in uh, 71. And I remember the first time I arrived at uh, Kennedy Airport, I took a cab. And at the time, the president of the U.S. was uh, Richard Nixon. By the way, they were devaluating the dollar during the summer where I was there. I, I bought dollars and my dollars were, went down. But uh, I arrived at the airport and I started to talk to the cab driver. And he loved France. And he was interested in politics. So I asked him, and he did not like Nixon. So he was talking uh, about that. He said, you love France, so what do you know in France? Do you know the French president? It was Mr. Pompidou at the time. <laughs> Nobody here remembers, but uh, he said, no, I don't know the French president, but I know Christian Dior. And <laughs> immediately, it stuck me and showed that the name of Christian Dior uh, is one of the, if not the most known all over the world in many countries. Uh, when I go to China, when I go everywhere, it's uh, the name which is uh, the most well known. So, as far back as 71, I understood the, the power of, of a name. It's not enough, but I think it's one reason also. When by chance uh, I was in contact with the real company, uh, I think it's when I had the idea uh, of doing this. Rule number three, be prepared. I am interested in business. So in business, uh, I think we are in a very strange period for several years. Uh, money is almost uh, costing zero, if not a negative interest, which means that some companies, as LVMH, for instance, when we borrow money, we are paid to borrow money. I think it's dangerous. Two, uh, you have a lot of money in the markets. Three, the prices of assets like stock prices are extremely high. So I am very optimistic for the world for the long term. But 
I see as unavoidable that a crisis happen within the next few years. I cannot tell you exactly when, but bubble are inevitably building up now. And at one point, they will explode. You know, it's the first time I have seen that since I am in business. And since I am in business, I have seen crises almost every 10 years. It very soon will be over the last period of 10 years without anyone. So, Rule number four, execute well. Almost as important as the idea at the beginning is the execution. And the fact that building on the idea must be really very professional, very efficient, and that also makes a difference. I have seen a lot of startups with very interesting ideas, but with also some other competitors, almost with the same ideas. But only one or two of them are successful. It's because the execution of their business plan. So it's key for the long-term success uh, of a startup to be able to execute well. Also, if you want to have more self-confidence and self-belief, I've designed a special free training to help you do it. The science says it can take up to 254 days of consecutive action to build a new habit. And, and I want that for you. I want you to build the habit of self-belief. So what I'm gonna do is email you every day for 254 days, a link to an unlisted video that will shift your belief forward to get on it for free. The link to join is in the description below. If you have a great product, lots of people will buy it. <laughs> and then the company will be successful. You really have to believe the internet's going to be mainstream. A lot of people are gonna get out there and use it. Your number one job is to become more of yourself and to grow yourself into the best of yourself. Rule number five, welcome new ideas. I think our companies are very involved in the tech world because tech has more and more importance on the, the way we do business. For instance, if you take um, one of our companies, Sephora. Sephora is doing uh, a lot on e-commerce in the US. For instance, it's the number one site selling beauty products in the US. So we are always in touch with new ideas, with newcomers, with uh, startups, and we try to find the best. For instance, in LVMH here in VivaTech, we have had 800 uh, application for the startups. We chose 30 of them, and among the 30, we will uh, choose one, two, or three that will be announced tomorrow that I think or we think will be the most promising uh, for the future. Rule number six, create quality. What do you think the definition of luxury is? Uh, first of all, I don't like very much the word luxury because you have something attached to it which means show off, which means something of non-significance, you know, something futile, something that is useless. You know? And I think a better definition is combination of quality and creativity. It's how I define what we do. Uh, obviously, these products, because of the very high quality uh, they, they have, because of the high level of innovation, they are expensive. But the reality is really uh, behind uh, the appearance, behind the price, it's the quality and the innovation that people are looking for. So for me, it's a definition. And <clears throat> in the group, we are really concentrated on this. How can we create the most uh, innovative products? And, and the, the creators or the scientists that work with us in the many laboratories we have, they have complete freedom to express new ideas, and after that, we have to transform them in um, reality all over, the, all over the world. Rule number seven, be fair with the consumer. 
When the currency is going down, we have the possibility of increasing gradually prices uh, like we did recently in the US, 5%, because our products are so in demand that we can do it. But obviously, we are very fair with the consumer. When the currency goes back up, which can happen, which happened in the past, we do the opposite. So we can decrease prices also. Uh, if, for instance, the dollar comes back up, uh, we can also play it the other way to be fair with our cus consumers. Rule number eight, start small. For us, it's, um, I would say, a way of life because uh, almost all of our brands were a startup. If you take, for instance, Christian Dior, it was started from scratch in 1947. And we try to keep the same spirit, which is the spirit of being close uh, to the founder and close to a movement and new ideas and uh, also, I must say that the startup, the startup we st see today, their goal is not to stay a startup forever. They want to grow. Uh, the goal of a startup is becoming a, a large company. Uh, if you take, uh, for instance, Facebook or uh, Microsoft, uh, they were startup at one point. Now they are quite big, and we try to help the startups that we chose today to become big success and I think it's a goal of every startup. This being said, it's not always easy. Rule number nine, create desire. You have students in marketing, but I often meet students in marketing and in spite of the group being number one with the students in France, in desirability to work in the group, I always tell them we don't do marketing because marketing is against what a company like us should do. Because marketing, what is marketing? Marketing is to <coughs> analyze what the customer wants and then try to follow what the customer is looking for and uh, test what you create following these trends and try to, to do it. We do completely differently. Uh, we create new products and sometimes it fails, but when it's successful, the customers follow. So the marketing is not for us part of the product creation. So the marketing is after. The marketing is when uh, we have these products, uh, how with these products, which people want, maximize the desire. Because our business, you, you asked a question about luxury. Luxury, for, for me, is how can you create desire? The, the most important word uh, in, in our business is desire, how to create desire. And when you have the product, then you have to create a good environment uh, in the shops, and you have to present it well, you have to do uh, well, uh, good films if it's a perfume, uh, good uh, advertisement uh, either in the <coughs> magazine or in the internet if it's a, if it's a, a product. Yeah. So that's the way I, I see and we see in, in my group uh, uh, the, the, way to, the, the way to put product in contact with uh, the, the consumers. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is be competitive. I am never bored. It's what I have in mind. When I think of myself young, it, it's fun. Yeah. And I am very competitive, so it's like in tennis, I always want to win, yeah? and that's fun. 
Now I've got some special bonus clips that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know, what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week? When you just watch a video and you get motivated, the sign says you have a 35% chance of actually following through. That's not good enough, Believe Nation. We need to take some action. But when you watch a video, you get motivated and you create a specific plan of action, that number jumps from 35% to 91% chance of you following through. And when you publicly commit to other people, like leaving a comment down in this video, your number jumps to 95% chance of you actually following through on the plan you set for yourself. So I wanna know your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. Leave it down in the comments below so I can celebrate you. We are investing for a long time. Uh, we are buying, investing in startups of any kind. Fashion startup, digital startup. I think the, the best example I can give you is a Sephora. You know, when we invested in Sephora in the 90s, it was a startup. And today, it's maybe the largest retailer of beauty products in the world. And we have started also very early, beginning of 2000, a digital operation, which is based in San Francisco, where we have, I think, one of the best digital team in the world. And uh, it's extremely successful. For instance, we are number one seller on the digital, uh, on the web, uh, of beauty products in the US, far above Amazon. Right. You know? so, right. so we know how to manage uh, startups and how to make them grow. Because remember, a startup, the goal of the startup is not to stay a startup. The goal of a startup is to grow and to become, if possible, a, a, a large company. If you want 10 more rules from John Paul DeJoria, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. To becoming successful, whether it's in a business, whether it's working with someone or for someone or in your own personal life. And I learned this selling encyclopedias door to door in my early 20s.